For today's double indie game review, we have two indie games that each do something different for two very popular different kinds of genres. We're starting with the Hotline Miami inspired Osho, and then the Pokemon inspired Cassette Beasts. Osho is an action roguelike by way of Hotline Miami. We are trapped on a mysterious island where an infinite mansion has kidnapped our lover. And to save them, we are going to shoot our way through lots and lots of enemies. The gameplay here, as you can see, definitely draws inspiration from Hotline Miami. Enemies are very responsive, they will hit you very quickly. And your only means of countering this is the power to slow down time which the meter kind of regenerates as you're not using it. Each area is built around kind of different biomes within the mansion itself. This affects the kind of layout, any kind of environmental hazards or challenges, and whatever boss you'll get at the end. Now, the individual rooms or the individual areas are procedurally generated, but I believe it is the same kind of handmade areas that are stitched together. Now, the other aspect of the roguelike nature is what happens as you explore and you'll gain power and the enemies will gain power as well. Every few rooms you'll find a mysterious bar where you'll be able to buy drinks. Each drink acts as a passive bonus and the effects are very wide reaching. Some are like give pistols more ammo. Others are incredibly powerful, such as having a dog help you, gain a bullet shield, increase shotgun bullets, and more. And you'll unlock more drinks as you spend money as kind of part of a persistence aspect. Now, every time you beat an area during a run, all subsequent areas will have the enemies upgraded with a random modifier. This can make them more reactive, faster firing, more damage, more health, that kind of thing. So you're going to have to kind of roll with the punches or roll with the bullets in order to get around. Now, with that said, I do really like the design of this one. The different bosses definitely lend a different flavor to Hotline Miami where those bosses were more puzzling. This feels more like a shooter boss, with of course having to use slow down and dodging to avoid their attacks. Music is well done and fits the theme I think perfectly for this game. It's also very loud as a heads up. I have it kind of very low here for the review, but definitely some headphone warning when you load this up for the first time. With all that said, however, I do have an issue with this game. And I don't believe there's enough variance to hold interest for repeated plays, especially after you get your first win. There is a harder mode variant that unlocks once you win, but the issue that the game has with a lot of these kinds of very power-focused action roguelikes is that there's not enough the game can really throw at you once you master it. Doesn't matter what the enemies have in terms of health, their damage or any modifiers, where the answer for you is just gun, or specifically bullets. And it would have been interesting to see kind of like, I think more in your face modifiers, maybe different enemy types, maybe something that can mix things up just a little bit more. But that is only gonna be a problem once you beat the game. And this can be on the challenging side. The bullet shield was definitely my saving grace for this one in terms of some of the boss attacks and their patterns. But this is still a fantastic action game and once again proof that just about anything can be improved with roguelike elements to it. So if you are a fan of Hotline Miami and you're looking for one that's going to be a whole lot of shooting with some great music, then I highly recommend checking out Osho. You'll find links to our interview with the developer as well as my complete run of the game in the description down below. But with that, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're moving from noir violence to some very peaceful music and monsters with Cassette Beasts. But if you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, then check out my game design books. For entry level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres, with more coming soon. Cassette Beast wears its Pokemon, or maybe Digimon, inspirations on its sleeves. When we are transported to a mysterious island, 
where people of various time periods have ended up, we learn that the island is populated by monsters, who we can capture their essence on the cassette tapes in order to fight, train, and explore this strange land. But of course, there's something even stranger going on. And if we're going to have to find our way out, we are going to have to explore, collect, and uh, catch them all along the way. So, this is an open world style Pokemon game with even some aspects of Metroidvania, which I've actually played a few like Pokemon Metroidvania games in the past. But, after you get past kind of the opening area, the game's world comes to life. You'll be exploring the areas looking for various monsters to capture in combat using various cassette tapes. Each monster is of course its own unique critter and it belongs to one of different races or alignments. Each alignment and so on will have different strengths or weaknesses and this will also impact what skills they can use. As an interesting aspect of the game is that Beyond the base skills that a monster has, you can add more to them by attaching stickers to their cassette. These stickers come in different rarities and what they will simply do is add additional passives or conditions to said skill. So it could be something like, skill has a 5% chance of cause poison, skill has increased crit chance, and so on and so on. Now, the combat itself is really quite interesting, and I do like it as kind of a more involved take compared to some of the other Monster Collector Pokemon S games we've played. You see here, it's not a simple rock, paper, scissors system of one power strong against the other. Here, each elemental type has different effects based on what it's going up against. So for instance, one effect could be if you hit an enemy with poison, they'll become spiked so that you'll take damage if you attack them. Another one could change their actual elemental type if you hit them with a specific one and it gives it a little bit more flavor compared to again just being a pure strength or pure weakness kind of affair. To capture monsters, the percent chance is based on the strength of the monster, how much health they have, if they've taken any damage during the turn, and if the capturee is, or capturer, is getting hit or taking damage during that turn. So monsters of course have a really great look to them, and they all have evolved forms. Speaking of that, the game's kind of super move is that you and your partner can fuse a Dragon Ball Z style to create a new monster, and the fact that they've created Fusion versions of every possible combination is definitely something above and beyond. It even adds like vocals to the background track when it happens. When you fuse characters together, the monster that you'll have will have the sum total of all the skills and combined stats, which can definitely help you out during boss fights. Now, with everything said, of course, your progression is going to be completing quests and finding specific monsters in the field that once you've captured them, they will unlock a new world power, new kind of movement tech. So this can be giving you the ability to glide, use magnet or magnetizing certain things, and so on. So there's a lot here to this game, and it certainly has a ton of charm with the aesthetics and great music. With that said, however, I do have a few complaints. The main ones are with the UI. I feel the UI could be a little bit better and a little bit clearer in terms of explaining or letting the player do certain things. Moving, swapping, and kind of interacting with your various cassettes feels very cumbersome. It takes multiple screens to do this, and there doesn't seem to be any like, key shortcuts to get to things a lot faster. Speaking about the different monsters and cassettes, I could use I think, a little clear explanation as to how stats and stuff measure up. Each skill will have a quote unquote power level that's supposed to give you an idea of how much damage it will do, but there are definitely cases where it feels like I hit an enemy with an attack, they just barely take any damage, and not hit him with something else and it just completely wipes them out. And it's kind of weird when it comes to UI in that respect. The game will show you if an attack is going to have an elemental impact on a character, 
but I would have loved like either like a damage predictor or just something to let me know if this attack is good, bad, or indifferent to this type of monster in terms of defense. Other than that, the kind of exploring the world is okay, but it does feel a little bit slow at the start. A key aspect of the progression is going to be getting the different powers, finding and unlocking shortcuts to let you speed through things, and finding fast travel that you'll be able to make use of to quickly get around. And I would also add as in another like, UI a nitpick, is that it would be nice to get like a tooltip or some explanation as to what a buff or debuff is. There's one part where I fought against these ghosts who I could not attack at all, and there is no explanation about why that is. The game will give you like a one-time tutorial pop-up when you run into a new elemental type or elemental impact, but it would be nice to have something else that you could refer to. But with all that said, Cassette Beast is a really well done Pokemon-like, or maybe even a Digimon-like at this point. It has charm to it, the different monsters and everything are interesting, and there is certainly a lot to do in this world. So if you are someone looking for another monster collector, again with a lot of charm and more interactivity on the kind of world environment, I highly recommend this game as well. So, with that said, we're going to wrap up this double review here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do all the liking, YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. Check out our Discord and Patreon link down below. And let me tell you your game for a future stream and video. Please reach out. Come back for discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where you some of the art and science of games.